In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can create a trial balance. Now, in this case, we have not done our adjusting entries yet. We will try to do that in another video and show how this affects the trial balance. Um, but in this case, we have not done those yet, so this is an unadjusted trial balance. Now, when you start to do your trial balance, you're going to need some headers at the very top there. Now, the first header is always going to be the company's name. In this case, we have CK Company. Um, the next line is going to say what the statement is. So in this case, it is an unadjusted trial balance. And the last line is going to be the date. I know it's at the end of the month. I'm just going to put in some X's since it didn't specify the year. Now, all of these lines down here are going to tell us what the balance is in each individual account is. And I have our ledger off to the side right here. So let's take a look at some of those balances and let's put them in so we have that information in our trial balance. Now, sometimes at the very top of your trial balance, you will see uh, some information in these boxes. It'll say debit balance and credit balance. Now, you don't necessarily need those in your trial balance. Sometimes it's just to kind of guide you as you go through. But just keep in mind that we have three columns here. One is the account name, one is any debit balances, and one is any credit balances. So let's take a look at cash first. Now, cash over here, we take a look at our general ledger. The ending balance in that account was 47,000. So we can input 47,000 over here. Now notice that I put it in the left-hand column rather than the right-hand column. This is because the balance on our cash ledger shows that it is a debit balance. So it goes over here on the left-hand side. Now our next account is accounts receivable. And that one also had a debit balance and that was for 1500. The next account is supplies. Let's put in supplies for 2000. Now let's scroll down so we can take a look at some of our other accounts there. Prepaid insurance with a debit balance of 6000, still in the debit column. Okay. Accounts payable. Uh, let's see here. Notice we have a zero balance in that account. Now, there's a few ways that we can handle this. Um, one of the ways is we could just go ahead and put in um, uh, basically a zero. We can input the information, just put a zero in the normal balance for that account. Um, or you can leave it out completely. Um, just so that we can see how all of these transfer, I'm going to use the zero balance instead of actually going through everything there. But because um, we don't want to really get rid of it right now because we might update it later depending on what happens in our adjusting entries. So I'm going to leave that there with a zero balance. Okay, now let's take a look at this next one. Now our next one is wages payable. And you'll notice that this one also does not have anything updated in the account, so we're going to use a zero balance there as well. Now remember, the reason why I'm putting it in the right-hand column is because it is a liability. Now remember, normal balances always follow the increase side. So um, let's say, let me see if we can go back here. If we take a look at our old pregnant Elsie that we dealt with earlier, the plus signs here. So if it's an asset account, it has a normal debit balance, liability, capital and income have normal credit balances, and then expenses have normal debit balances. So since wages payable was a liability, I put the zero on the normal balance of credit side. So just to kind of show where all of that was coming from. Okay, let's take a look at our next one. We have another zero balance, unearned fees of zero. Um, our next one is Christopher Knowles Capital. Now this one has a balance. And this one is a 50,000 credit balance. Now next is the drawing. Now he has not withdrawn anything this, this month so far. Drawing. Now, remember that important rule about the drawing account. It is a contra capital account. So that means that the normal balance flips. So that's one of those special ones that we think about for um, whenever you see that zero there um, or whenever you see drawing, keep in mind it is a contra capital. So it has a normal debit balance, which is why I'm putting that zero 
in the left-hand column. Now, fees earned has a 9,500 balance. Keep going down. Wages expense has a zero balance as well. Supplies expense has a zero balance. Rent expense has a $3,000 balance. Let's take a look at these last couple. And insurance expense and utilities expense. Now, those also had a balance of zero as well. So now that we have all of those balances <clears throat> and put in, we have one more thing that we have to do in order to ensure that everything looks nice. Um, what we have to do here is to sum up each of these columns. Now, assuming that no errors have been made, uh, these should balance. So let's try adding those up. I'm going to use a formula in Excel, but please feel free to try adding them up on your calculator. Okay. Put that over slightly. There we go. And there we go. 59,500 equals 59,500. We're good to go. Now, if there had been a discrepancy here, that meant that there was an error somewhere and I would have had to go back and find some, find out where I went astray. Now, keep in mind, this isn't 100%, but it is a pretty good indication that everything was done correctly. Now, the only other thing you may want to add to this is perhaps some, um, if you want commas, uh, just so it's nice and readable, um, or you might want to add some dollar signs to the very top numbers or the very bottom numbers. That's typical fashion. But ultimately, this is pretty much an entire unadjusted trial balance. And once we do those adjusting entries in the next video in this series, we'll be able to show you how those adjusting entries updated our unadjusted trial balance. So happy studying. We'll see you soon.